Candidates are expected to have a thorough understanding of the syllabus details outlined in the accompanying figure. Electric charge. Objects can be given one of two types of electric charge, positive and negative. When two charged objects are brought close together, there will be a force between those objects. Like charges repel. Unlike charges attract. Electric charge is measured in units called coulombs. Where charges come from? Everything is made of tiny called atoms. They have electric charges inside them. A simple model of the atom is shown on the diagram. There is a central nucleus made up of protons and neutrons. Protons have a positive charge. Neutrons have no charge. Much lighter electrons are orbiting around a nucleus. Electrons have a negative charge. Atoms have equal numbers of electrons and protons. So the net charge is zero. This is called the neutral atom. When the atoms lost the electrons, so the number of electrons less than the number of protons. And the net charge is a positive. This is called a positive ion atom. When the atoms gain the electrons, so the number of electrons more than the number of protons. And the net charge is a negative. This is called a negative ion atom. Electric fields. Electric field is the region around an electric charge where another charge experiences a force. This can be shown by electric field lines. Fields lines always point away from positive charges towards negative charges. The direction of the field lines in an electric field is the direction of the force on a positive charge. The strength of an electric field increases where the field lines are close together. The strength of an electric field decreases where the field lines are far apart. The field lines cannot cross together. Electric field patterns of two opposite charged points. Electric field patterns of two same charged points. This is the neutral point, which is the point that has no electric field due to charges. Uniform electric fields patterns of two parallel opposite charges. The field lines are parallel and same space between each line. This shows that the strength of an electric field is constant. Electric field patterns of a changed conducting sphere. The field lines around a charge conducting sphere are symmetrical, as with a point charge. This is because the charges on the surface of the sphere will be evenly distributed. Conductors and insulators. A conductor is a material that allows charge, usually electrons, to flow through it easily, this is because it has free-moving electrons. Conductors tend to be metals. For example of the material that order from best conductor to the poorest conductor, as shown on the diagram. Metals conduct electricity very well because current is the rate of flow of charged particles. An insulator is a material that does not allow the flow of charge through them very easily, this is because it has no free-moving electrons. For example of insulators are rubber, plastic, glass, and wood. Some nonmetals, such as graphite, allow some charge to pass through them, so the graphite is conductor. Investigate how an insulator can be charged by friction. When the uncharged plastic rod is rubbed with an uncharged cloth, the friction causes the electrons transfer from the rod to the cloth. This causes the cloth to become a negative charge and the plastic rod to become a positive charge. Charging a conductor by induction. This is a neutral metal sphere. This is an insulating stand that prevents the negative charges from transferring between the metal and the earth. Place a negatively charged rod nearby the top of metal. The negative charges in the metal are repelled and move away to the bottom of the metal sphere. Connect an earth wire to the metal sphere. Negative charges from the metal travel to the earth. Remove the earth wire first, then remove the negative. The metal sphere is left with a positive charge. 
If we change a negative rod to a positive rod, place a positively charged rod nearby the top of metal. The negative charges in the metal are attracted and move towards the positive rod. Connect an earth wire to the metal sphere. Negative charges from the earth travel to the metal to neutralize the positive charges. Remove the earth wire first, then remove the positive rod. The metal sphere is left with a negative charge. Electrostatic phenomena. Rub the plastic ruler on the cloth or sleeve of your jumper. The ruler will become charged. We have assumed that the ruler has become positively charged. If it is held close to some small, uncharged pieces of paper some electrons within the paper will be attracted to the edges closest to the ruler. There will be an attraction between these negative parts of the paper and the positive ruler. A comb attracts your hair when you are brushing, because the friction causes negative charges to transfer between the comb and your hair. The comb and hair become oppositely charged, which is why they are attracted together. A negatively charged balloon attracts the positive charges in the stream of water. The stream of water bends toward the balloon because the attractive force between unlike charges is greater than the repulsive force between like charges. A negatively charged balloon strikes a wall because it repels the negative charges in the atoms on the wall. This causes the negative charges on the wall to move away the balloon. The attractive force between unlike charges is greater than the repulsive force between like charges, which is why the balloon sticks to the wall. Lightning during the thunderstorm. The attractive force between the bottom of the clouds and the positive charges at the ground causes negative charges to travel from the cloud to the ground. This creates an electric current. The electrical energy is transferred to light, heat, and sound energies. Candidates are expected to have a thorough understanding of the syllabus details outlined in the accompanying figure. Electric current. The electric current is related to the flow of charge. So the definition of electric current is the amount of charges passing a point per second. We can be wrote the equation as I equals Q over T where I is the current in ampere. Q is the amount of charge in coulomb. T is the time in second. So, 1 ampere is 1 coulomb per second. The direction of current is same to the direction of moving of positive charges. While the direction of current is opposite to the direction of moving of the negative charges. Conductors. Conductor is material that allows charge, usually electrons, to flow through it easily, this is because it has free-moving electrons. Electrons flow easily through all metals. We therefore describe metals as being good conductors of electricity. In metals, some electrons are free to move between the atoms. Under normal circumstances this movement is random. That is, the number of electrons flowing in any one direction is roughly equal to the number flowing in the opposite direction. There is therefore no overall flow of charge and no electric current. If, however, a cell or battery is connected across the conductor, more of the electrons now flow in the direction away from the negative terminal and towards the positive terminal. We say there is now a net flow of charge. This flow of charge is what we call an electric current that its direction from positive to negative terminal. The greater the flow of charge, the greater the electric current. Insulators. Insulators is a material that does not allow the flow of charge through them very easily, this is because it has no free-moving electrons. Electrons do not flow easily through plastics, rubbers, glasses or woods, so they are poor conductors of electricity. In insulators, all the electrons are held tightly in position nucleus 
and are unable to move from atom to atom. Charges are therefore unable to move through insulator. Measuring current. A simple circuit is shown on the diagram. This is a cell. This is a light bulb. This is an amateur. It is used to measure the current in a circuit. It must connect in series. Good amateur should has low resistance to allow more charges to flow through it. This is the connecting wire, which is made of copper, because a copper is a good conductor. We can draw the diagram of this circuit in the symbol of each component as shown. This symbol is a cell. Longest side is indicated a positive. Shortest side is indicated a negative. The convectional free-moving electrons in a copper flow from a negative terminal to a positive terminal of a cell. While the convectional current flow from a positive terminal to a negative terminal of a cell. This symbol is a light bulb. This symbol is an amateur. Direct current, or DC. Direct current is the current to flow in one direction. This current draws from a dry cell or battery. Cells and batteries provide currents and voltages that are always in the same direction and have the same value. This is called direct current or direct voltage. If we draw this as a graph, it would be a straight horizontal line. Alternating current or AC. Alternating current is the current to flow forward and backward. This current draws from mains electricity of house and generator. Its value increases and then decreases and then does the same again, but in the opposite direction. If we could draw these changes as a graph, they would look like a wave. Candidates are expected to have a thorough understanding of the syllabus details outlined in the accompanying figure. Electromotive force, or EMF. Electromotive force is the electrical work done by a source in moving a unit charge around a complete circuit. We can write the equation as E equals W over Q where E is the electromotive force that is measured in volt. W is the electrical work done in joule. Q is the charge in coulombs. Potential difference, or voltage. Potential difference is the work done per unit charge that passing charge through a component. We can write the equation as V equals W over Q, where V is the potential difference that is measured in volt. W is the electrical work done in joule. Q is the charge in coulombs. So, 1 volt equals 1 joule per coulomb. We often use cells or batteries to move charges around circuits. We can imagine them as being electron pumps. They transfer energy to the charges. The amount of energy given to the charges by a cell or battery is measured in volts. If we connect a 9 volt cell into a circuit, and current flows, 9 joules of energy is given to each coulomb of charge that passes through the cell. As the charges flow around a circuit the energy they carry is transferred by the components they pass through. For example, when current passes the wires, energy is transferred to the surroundings as heat. When current passes through a bulb, energy is transferred to the surroundings as heat and light. Measuring electromotive force and potential difference. This is the symbol of a voltmeter. The voltmeters have two types as digital and analog. Voltmeter is used to measure voltage across battery, cell and components. The voltmeters are connected across, or in the parallel with, the cell and a light bulb. Good voltmeter should has very high resistance to block the current to flow through it. A simple circuit is shown on the diagram. This is a cell. This is a light bulb. This is an amateur. 
A voltmeter connected across a cell, or battery, will measure the energy given to each coulomb of charge that passes through it. A voltmeter connected across a component will measure the electrical energy transferred when each coulomb of charge passes through it. Connecting cells in series. Each cell has an EMF of 1.5 volts. Four cells connected in series. So, total EMF is 1.5 plus 1.5 plus 1.5 plus 1.5 is equal to 6 volts. If one cell is reversed as shown, so the EMF of two cells is cancelled. Then the total EMF is 3 volts. Connecting cells in parallel. Each cell has EMF of 1.5 volts. Four cells connected in parallel. So, a total EMF is 1.5 volts, which is equal to the EMF of one cell. Candidates are expected to have a thorough understanding of the syllabus details outlined in the accompanying figure. Resistance Resistance is defined as the ratio of potential difference to current. We can write the equations as R equals V over I where R is the resistance in ohms V is the potential difference in volts I is the current in amperes. So, 1 ohm is the 1 volt per ampere. The resistance is the value in the material that resists the current to flow through it. So, for a given potential difference, the higher the resistance, the lower the current. Resistor. The resistor is the component in the circuit that is used to control the current. Two types of resistor as a fixed resistor and a variable resistor. The fixed resistor and its symbol is shown on the diagram. The variable resistor and its symbol is shown on the diagram. The variable resistor is used to vary the current in the circuit. Resistance and resistor in the circuit. A battery transfers the energy to the charges for driving the charges to move around the circuit. All components in a circuit offer some resistance to the flow of charge. In the connecting wires allow charges to pass through very easily losing very little of their energy. The flow of charge through some components is not so easy and a large amount of energy may be used to move the charges through them. This energy is transferred, usually as heat and other form of energy. In a fixed resistor, the electrical energy is transferred to heat when the charge passing through it. A light bulb the electrical energy is transferred to heat and light when the charge passing through it. If the circuit has no the resistor the current is too high and the bulb breaks. The variable resistors, as it is possible to alter their resistance. In the circuit, a variable resistor is being used to control the size of the current in a bulb. If the resistance is increased the current will be smaller and the bulb will glow less brightly or not at all. If the resistance is decreased there will be a larger current and the bulb shines more brightly. The variable resistor is behaving in this circuit as a dimmer switch. An experiment to determine the resistance of a resistor using a voltmeter and an ammeter. Set up the circuit shown in figure. Turn the variable resistor to its maximum value. Close the switch and take the readings from the ammeter and the voltmeter. Alter the value of the variable resistor again, and take a new pair of readings from the meters. Repeat the whole process at least six times. Place the results in a table. We can find the resistance of a resistor by three methods. First, calculate the resistance of a resistor, R, by the equation, R equals V over I for each pair of the results and find the average of the resistance. Second, plot the graph of voltage against current, which shows the graph is a straight line graph passing through the origin. The resistance of resistor is the gradient of the graph. 
The steeper the slope, the greater the resistance of the wire. Third, plot the graph of the current against voltage. The resistance is 1 over gradient. The steeper the slope, the smaller the resistance of the wire. Factors that affect the resistance of a metallic conductor. Temperature. As temperature increases, the resistance of a metallic conductor increases. This is because the atoms in a conductor gain the kinetic energy and vibrate more, which reduces the rate of flow of charges. This causes the current to decrease and the resistance to increases. Types of materials. Different materials have different resistance. For example, silver a best conductor, so it has least resistance. The resistance of a material increases as follows as the diagram below. Length of a conductor wire. The longer a wire conductor, the greater its resistance. This is because electrons have to collide with more ion atoms and decreasing the rate of flow of charges and so there will be more resistance. So, the resistance of a wire is directly proportional to its length. Cross-section area of a wire. The thicker a wire, the smaller its resistance. This is because there is more space for electrons and so more electrons can flow. So, the resistance of a wire is inversely proportional to cross-sectional area. Cross-section area is equal to pi, radius squared, or pi, diameter squared, over 4. So, cross-section area is directly proportional to the square of radius and square of diameter. So, the resistance of a wire is inversely proportional to square of radius and square of diameter. Exam style. First, a piece of wire has a resistance of 0.45 ohms. Calculate the resistance of another piece of wire of the same material with a third of the length and half the cross-section area. Resistance is directly proportional to the length. A third of the length means that the length decreases three times, so the resistance also decreases three times. Therefore, the resistance is 0.45 to divide by 3 is equal to 0.15 ohms. Resistance is inversely proportional to the cross-section area. A half of the cross the cross-section area decreases two times, so the resistance increases two times. Therefore, the resistance is 0.15 times 2 is equal to 0.3 ohms. Second, Wire P has a resistance of 330 ohms, a diameter D, and a length L. A second piece of wire Q is made of the same material as P. The diameter of wire Q is 0.50 times D, and its length is 5.0 times L. Calculate the resistance of wire Q. Resistance is inversely proportional to the diameter squared. As diameter of Q is 0.5 times D, meaning that diameter of Q is half of diameter of P, so the resistance of Q is 4 times of the resistance of P. Therefore, the resistance of Q is 4 times 330 is equal to 1320 ohms. Resistance is directly proportional to the length. As length of Q is 5 times of P, so the resistance of Q is also 5 times of the resistance of P. Therefore, the resistance of Q is 5 times 1320 is equal to 6600 ohms. Ohm's law. Ohm's law states that the potential difference, or voltage, across a metallic conductor is proportional to the current passing through it, when temperature remains constant. So, we can write that V equals I R. The metallic conductor obeys the Ohm's law, it is called that ohmic conductor. An experiment to explain the current voltage graphs for a resistor of constant resistance. Set up the circuit shown in figure. Alter the value of the variable resistor and take the readings from the meters. Repeat the whole process at least six times. Reverse a cell and repeat the all steps as the previous. Place the results in a table and plot a graph of current against voltage. The graph is a straight line passing through the origin. 
This shows that the current is directly proportional to the voltage. Its slope is constant, so its resistance remains constant. This side of the graph comes from the result that we reverse a cell. An experiment to explain the current voltage graphs for a filament lamp. Set up the circuit shown in figure. Alter the value of the variable resistor and take the readings from the meters. Repeat the whole process at least six times. Reverse a cell and repeat the all steps as the previous. Place the results in a table and plot the graph of current against voltage. The graph is not a straight line. This shows that resistance of the bulb changes. The slope of the graph decreases. This shows that the rate of increasing voltage is greater than the rate of increasing current. This means that the resistance of filament to increase. This is because at higher current and voltage to create the more heating effect, causing the resistance of filament to increase. This side of the graph comes from the results that we reverse a cell. An experiment to explain the current voltage graphs for a diode. Set up the circuit shown in figure. Alter the value of the variable resistor and take the readings from the meters. Repeat the whole process at least six times. Reverse a cell and repeat the all steps as the previous. Place the results in a table and plot a graph of current against voltage. This strangely shaped graph shows that diodes have a high resistance when the current is in one direction and a low resistance when it is in the opposite direction. This side of the graph shows that a diode has low resistance, causing the current to flow. This side of the graph comes from the results that we reverse a cell. The resistance of a diode has very high resistance, causing no current to flow. This shows that the diode only allows the current to flow in one way. Candidates are expected to have a thorough understanding of the syllabus details outlined in the accompanying figure. Heating effect of current. Heating effect of current in wires or appliances causes by their resistance and current passing through them. The wiring in a house is designed to let current pass through it easily. As a result, the wires do not become warm when appliances are being used. We say that the wires have a low resistance and lower heating effect. These wires are made of a copper with insulating. A light bulb. When current passes through the very thin wire filament of a traditional light bulb it becomes very hot and glows white. The bulb is transferring electrical energy to heat and light energy. Other common appliances that make use of the heating effect of electricity include kettles, electric ovens, toasters, electric fires and hair dryers. They want wires, more usually called heating elements, to become warm. The wires of a heating element are designed to have a high resistance, so that as the current passes through them energy is transferred and the element heats up. Electrical power. In mechanics, power is defined as the work done, or energy transfer, per unit time. We can write the equation as P equals W over T. We can recall the formula for the voltage as V equals W over Q. And W equals V, Q. We can recall the formula for the current as I equals Q over T. Substitute, W equals V, Q. And Q over T equals I. So, we can write the formula for the power as P equals V, I. We can recall the formula for the voltage as V equals I, R. Substitute V equals I, R. So, we can write the formula for the power as P equals I squared R. We can recall the formula for the current as I equals V over R. Substitute I equals V over R. 
So, we can write the formula for the power as P equals V squared over R Electrical energy Rearranging the energy and power equation, the energy can be written as E equals P T We substitute P equals V I So, we can be written the formula for the electrical energy as E equals V I T Everyday appliances transfer electrical energy from the mains to other forms of energy in the appliance. For example, in a washing machine, this will transfer electrical energy into a kinetic energy. The amount of energy an appliance transfers depends on how long the appliance is switched on. The power of the appliance. Measuring energy usage. Energy usage in homes and businesses is calculated and compared using the kilowatt hour. The kilowatt hour is defined as a unit of energy equivalent to one kilowatt of power expended for one hour. Calculating energy usage with kilowatt hour. The kilowatt hour can also be defined using an equation E equals PT, where E equals energy in kilowatt hour. P equals power in kilowatt. T equals time in hour. Therefore, 1 kilowatt hour equals 1000 watts times 3600 seconds equals 3.6 times 10 to the power of 6 joules. Since 1 kilowatt equals 1000 watts and 1 hour equals 3600 seconds, the kilowatt hour is a large unit of energy and used for calculating the cost of energy used in homes, businesses, and factories. Appliances are given power ratings as shown on the diagram. This power tell consumers that the amount of energy between 2500 joules to 3000 joules transferred by electrical work from the main power supply to the kettle every second. This energy is commonly measured in kilowatt hour, which is then used to calculate the cost of energy used. For example, a kettle transfers 2,500 watts of electrical power to heat in 90 minutes. How much will this cost if 1 kilowatt hour costs 14.2 pennies? Convert from 2,500 watts to kilowatts. The result is 2.5 kilowatt. Convert from 90 minutes to hours. The result is 1.5 hours. Calculate the energy used in kilowatt hours. The result is 3.75 kilowatt hour. Then, calculate the price. The result is 53.25 pennies. Candidates are expected to have a thorough understanding of the syllabus details outlined in the accompanying figure. Circuit Diagram and Circuit Components You will be expected to know what each component is and how it behaves in a circuit. Power Supply, Cell and Battery They supply electrical energy to the circuit and driving charges around the circuit. This causes the current. This is the symbol of a dry cell, which gives a directed current. The longer side is positive. The shorter side is negative. This is the symbol of a battery, which consists at two or more cells. It gives a directed current. This is the symbol of power supply. This is the symbol of a general directed current power supply. This is the symbol of a general alternating current power supply. Fixed resistor and variable resistor. They are used to control current. Higher resistance means lower current. This is the symbol of a fixed resistor. This is the symbol of a variable resistor. Potential divider or potentiometer. It is a kind of a variable resistor that consists of a coil of wire with a sliding contact midway along it. This is the symbol of a potential divider or potentiometer. Its resistance can be varied by moving the sliding contact, 
which changes the length of the wires and the resistance of potential divider. A switch is used to turn on and off the circuit. The first symbol shown is for an open switch, which means that the circuit is closed. The second symbol shown is for a closed switch, which means that the circuit is open. Lamps or light bulbs glow as the currents flow through. This is the symbol of a light bulb. An ammeter is used to measure the current is a circuit. It is connected in series with a circuit. This is the symbol of an ammeter. A voltmeter is used to measure the potential difference or voltage and electromotive force or EMF in a circuit. It is connected in parallel with a circuit. This is the symbol of a voltmeter. Fuse is used to prevent excessive current in the circuit and act as a safety against fire. This is the symbol of a fuse. A heater is a device that converts electrical energy into heat energy. This is the symbol of a heater. A thermistor is a temperature sensor. This symbol is a thermistor. Thermistors have a negative temperature coefficient. This means their resistance decreases as the temperature increases. The graph shows thermistors decreasing resistance with increasing temperature. In the circuit diagram, when temperature increases, the thermistor's resistance decreases, causing the current from the battery to increase. This causes a light bulb to shine brighter. Thermistors are used in temperature-sensitive circuits in devices such as fire alarms. They are also used in devices where it is important to make sure there is no change in temperature, for example, in freezers and computers. A light-dependent resistor, or LDR, is a light-intensity sensor. This symbol is a light-dependent resistor. A light-dependent resistor, LDR, has a resistance that changes when light is shone on it. In the dark, its resistance is high. While, when light is shone on it its resistance decreases. The graph shows LDR's decreasing resistance with increasing light intensity. In the circuit diagram, when the light shine on the LDR, the LDR's resistance decreases, causing the current from the battery to increase. This causes a light bulb to shine brighter. Light-dependent resistors are often used in light-sensitive circuits in devices such as photographic exposure equipment, automatic lighting controls and burglar alarms. Diode is a component that allows current to flow in one direction. This is the symbol of a diode. Current is allowed to flow in this direction. For the first circuit diagram, the current flows from the positive to negative terminal. So the diode allows the current to pass through, causing a bulb turns on and shining bright. For the second circuit diagram, the cell is reversed. This causes the current from the positive terminal to be blocked by the diode, causing a bulb turns off. Diodes are used in rectifier circuits that convert alternating current into direct current. A light emitting diode, or LED, glows when current flows through it in the correct direction. This is the symbol of a light-emitting diode. It glows when current flows in this direction. For the first circuit diagram, the current flows from the positive to negative terminal. The light-emitting diode allows current to pass through, causing it to glow brightly. For the second circuit diagram, the cell is reversed. This causes the current from the positive terminal to be blocked by the light-emitting diode, causing it to not glow. A motor is a device that converts electrical energy into kinetic energy. This is the symbol of a motor. Generator is the device that converts kinetic energy into electrical energy. This is the symbol of a generator. A relay coil is used to control a large current using a small current. This is the symbol of a relay coil. For the circuit diagram, a small current flows from the lower battery. This causes the relay coil to magnetize, which switch close switch S1. This allows a large current to flow from the larger power supply, causing the light bulb to turn on. 
A transformer is the device that converts the voltage from high voltage to low voltage, or low to high. This is the symbol of a transformer. Candidates are expected to have a thorough understanding of the syllabus details outlined in the accompanying figure. Series circuits. A series circuit is a simple loop circuit with no branches or junctions. There is only one path for the current to follow. In a series circuit containing three identical bulbs as shown, a single switch placed anywhere in the circuit can turn all the bulbs on and off. If a switch S2 opens, the other bulbs will stop working, and if it closes the other bulbs start working. If a switch S1 opens, the other bulbs will stop working, and if it closes the other bulbs start working. If any one of the bulbs breaks, it creates a gap in the circuit, and all of the other bulbs will stop working. We can conclude that the current has the same value in all parts of the circuit, current is not used up. The size of the current in a series circuit depends on the voltage supplied to it and the number and type of the other components in the circuit. If a second identical cell is added in series the voltage will double and so the current will also double, causing bulbs are brighter. The energy supplied by the cell is shared between all the bulbs. This means that the voltage from cell is shared across each bulb. In a series circuit, sum of voltage across each bulb is equal to voltage across a cell. So the more bulbs you add to a series circuit the less bright they all become. Decorative lights are often wired in series. Each bulb only needs a low voltage, so even when the voltage from the main supply is shared out between them each bulb still gets enough energy to produce light. Unfortunately, if the filament in one of the bulbs breaks, then all the other bulbs will go out. Series circuit summaries. Definition of series circuit. The current at every point in the series circuit is the same, and the sum of potential difference across each component is equal to the electromotive force the battery. The current from the battery I, T, is equal to the current through each component. So, I T equals I1 equals I2 equals I3. The sum of the potential difference across each component is equal to EMF of the battery. So, EMF E equals V1 plus V2 plus V3. The total resistance of series circuit is equal to the sum of the resistance of each component. So, RT equals R1 plus R2 plus R3. This can be proven mathematically as follows. From V equals I R. And E equals V, 1 plus V, 2 plus V, 3. Substitute E equals R, T, I, T, V, 1 equals R, 1, I, 1, V, 2 equals R, 2, I, 2, and V, 3 equals R, 3, I, 3. We can cancel out all of I, because they are equal. So RT equals R1 plus R2 plus R3. The disadvantage of a series circuit. If one component fails, the all components stop to work. A switch in a series circuit controls the entire circuit, not individual components. Work example 1. Calculate the total resistance current from the battery and potential difference across the resistor X and Y. Calculate the total resistance of a circuit using the following equation. RT equals RX plus RY. Substitute RX equals 4, RY equals 6. So RT equals 10 ohms. Calculate the current from a battery using the following equation. IT equals EMF over RT. Substitute EMF equals 12 and RT equals 10. So IT 
equals 1.2 amperes. In the series circuit, the current from battery is equal to current through each resistor. So, IT equals IX equals IY equals 1.2 amperes. Calculate the potential difference across the resistor X using the following equation. VX equals IX times RX. Substitute IX equals 1.2, RX equals 4. So VX equals 4.8 volts. Calculate the potential difference across the resistor Y using the following equation. VY equals IY times RY. Substitute IY equals 1.2, RY equals 6. So VY equals 7.2 volts. You see that VX plus VY equals 12 volts, which is equal to EMF of the battery. If we added a resistor Z in a series circuit like as shown, calculate the total resistance, current from the battery and potential difference across the resistor X, Y and Z. Calculate the total resistance of a circuit using the following equation. RT equals RX plus RY plus RZ. Substitute RX equals 4, RY equals 6 and RZ equals 6. So RT equals 16 ohms. You see that total resistance to increase. Calculate the current from a battery using the following equation. IT equals EMF over RT. Substitute EMF equals 12 and RT equals 16. So IT equals 0.75 amperes. You see that the current from battery to decrease. In the series circuit, the current from battery is equal to current through each resistor. So, IT equals IX equals IY equals IZ equals 0.75 amperes. Calculate the potential difference across the resistor X using the following equation. VX equals IX times RX. Substitute IX equals 0.75, Rx equals 4. So Vx equals 3 volts. Calculate the potential difference across the resistor Y using the following equation. Vy equals Iy times Ry. Substitute Iy equals 0.75, Ry equals 6. So Vy equals 4.5 volts. You see that V, X, and V, Y, to decrease. Calculate the potential difference across the resistor Z using the following equation. V, Z, equals I, Z, times R, Z. Substitute I, Z, equals 0.75, R, Z, equals 6. So V, Z, equals 4.5 volts. You see that V, X, plus V, Y, plus V, Z, equals 12 volts, which is equal to EMF of the battery. We can conclude that when more resistor are added in series to a circuit, total resistance increases. This causes the current from battery to decrease. Therefore, potential difference across each resistor decreases. Parallel circuits. A parallel circuit is a circuit with branches or junctions providing more than one path for the current to follow. In a parallel circuit containing three identical bulbs as shown, switches can be placed in different parts of the circuit to switch each bulb on and off individually, or all together. If a switch S3 opens, only the bulb on the same branch to turn off. If a switch S1 opens, all bulbs to turn off. If one bulb breaks, only the bulbs on the same branch are affected. This means the current from the cell is shared in each the branch. So the number of electrons that flow into a junction each second must be equal to the number that leave each second. This means that the currents entering a junction must always be equal to those that leave. At the junction P in the circuit the current that enters junctions is 0.6 amperes, 
and the current that leaves is 0.4 amperes plus 0.2 amperes equals 0.6 amperes. Each branch of the circuit receives the same voltage, so if more bulbs are added to a circuit in parallel they all keep the same brightness. This means that the voltage remains the same across each branch and is equal to the voltage across the cell or battery. The lights in your home are wired in parallel. This is why you can switch lights on and off separately and the brightness remains unaffected when other lights are turned on or off. Also, if a bulb breaks or is removed, you can still use the other lights. Parallel circuit summaries. Definition of parallel circuit. The sum of the current entering a junction is equal to the sum of the currents that leave the junction. The potential difference across each component is the same and equals to the EMF of the battery. The current from the battery I, T, is equal to the sum of the currents through each component. I, T, equals I, 1, plus I, 2, plus I, 3. The potential difference across each component is the same and equal to the EMF of the battery. EMF, E, equals V, 1, equals V, 2, equals V, 3. The total resistance of the parallel circuit is 1 over R, T, equals 1 over R, 1, plus 1 over R, 2, plus 1 over R, 3. This can be proven mathematically as follows. From I, T, equals I, 1, plus I, 2, plus I, 3. And I equals V over R. Substitute I, T, equals E over R, T, I, 1, equals V, 1, over R, 1, I, 2, equals V, 2, over R, 2, and I, 3, equals V, 3, over R, 3. We can cancel out all of V and E, because they are equal. So, 1 over R, T, equals 1 over R, 1, plus 1 over R, 2, plus 1 over R, 3. The advantages of a parallel circuit. The PD across each component is the same and equal to the EMF of the battery. If one component is failed, the other components will still work. Each component can connect a switch to turn on and off independently. Work example 2. Calculate the total resistance of the circuit. Current from battery. Current into a resistor X and Y. Calculate total resistance using the equation as shown. Substitute R X equals 6 and R Y equals 4. The result is 2.4 ohms. In the parallel circuit, the potential difference across each resistor is the same and equal to the EMF of the battery. So, EMF E equals V X equals V Y equals 12 volts. Calculate I T using the following equation. I T equals E over R T. Substitute EMF equals 12 and R T equals 2.4. So I T is 5 amperes. Calculate I X using the following equation. I X equals V X over R X. Substitute V X equals 12 and R X equals 6. So I X equals 2 amperes. Calculate I Y using the following equation. I Y equals V Y over R Y. Substitute V Y equals 12 and R Y equals 4. So I Y equals 3 amperes. You see that I X plus I Y equals 5 amperes equals I T adding 4 ohms resistor in the parallel circuit. Calculate the total resistance of the circuit, current from battery, current into a resistor X, Y, and Z. Calculate total resistance using the equation as shown. Substitute R, X, equals 6, R, Y, equals 4, and R, Z, equals 4. The result is 1.5 ohms. You see that the total resistance to decrease. The potential difference across each resistor is the same and equal to the EMF of the battery. So, EMF E equals V, X equals V, Y equals V, Z 
equals 12 volts. Calculate IT using the following equation. IT equals E over RT. Substitute EMF equals 12, and RT equals 1.5. So, IT is 8 amperes. You see that the current from the battery to increase. Calculate IX using the following equation. IX equals VX over RX. Substitute VX equals 12, and RX equals 6. So Ix equals 2 amperes. You see that the Ix to be the same. Calculate Iy using the following equation. Iy equals Vy over Ry. Substitute Vy equals 12 and Ry equals 4. So Iy equals 3 amperes. You see that the Iy to be the same. Calculate Iz using the following equation. Iz equals Vx over Rx. Substitute Vz equals 12 and Rz equals 4. So Iz equals 3 amperes. You see that the current from battery to increases and sharing into new resistor Z. You see that Ix plus Iy plus Iz equals 8 amperes equals IT. We can conclude that when a new resistor are added in parallel to a circuit, total resistance decreases. The current and PD across X and Y remains the same. Each resistor will have the same PD. The current from the battery increases to share the new added resistor Z. Work example 3. Calculate the total resistance of the circuit current from battery, current into a resistor X, Y and Z, voltage across the resistor X, Y and Z. Calculate the total resistance of the resistor Y and Z in series combination first by using the equation. R in series equals R Y plus R Z. Substitute R Y equals 2 and R Z equals 5. So, the result is 7 ohms. Calculate the total resistance of circuit by using the equation as shown. Substitute R in series equals 7 and Rx equals 6. So Rt equals 3.23 ohms. Calculate It using the equation. It equals EMF over Rt. Substitute EMF equals 10 and Rt equals 3.23. So, IT equals 3.10 amperes. VX equals EMF equals 10 volts. Calculate IX using the equation. IX equals VX over RX. Substitute VX equals 10 and RX equals 6, so IX equals 1.67 amperes. IY equals IZ equals I T minus I X equals 1.43 amperes. Calculate V Y using the equation. V Y equals I Y times R Y. Substitute I Y equals 10 over 7 and R Y equals 2. So V Y equals 2.86 volts. Calculate V Z using the equation. V Z equals Iz times Rz, substitute Iz equals 10 over 7 and Rz equals 5. So V, Y equals 7.14 volts. You see that V, Y plus V, Z equals 10 volts equals EMF of the battery. Short circuit. When the switch S is opened, three lamps X, Y and Z light up. When the switch is closed, two lamps X and Y turn off. This is because most of the current flows through the switch S, and very small current flows through lamps X and Y, causing they are not brighter. Which is called a short circuit.
Candidates are expected to have a thorough understanding of the syllabus details outlined in the accompanying figure. Potential dividers. When two resistors are connected in series, the potential difference across the power source is shared between them. The current remains the same any points in series circuit, so the current from the power supply is equal to the current through R1 and R2. So, the potential difference across each resistor are proportional to its resistance. The resistor with the largest resistance will have a greater potential difference than the other one. If the resistance of R1 is increased, it will get a greater share of the potential difference, whilst the R2 will get a smaller share of potential difference. If the resistance of R1 is decreased, it will get a smaller share of the potential difference, whilst the R2 will get a greater share of potential difference. This causes the ratio of R1 over R2 equals V1 over V2. Potentiometer or rheostat. A potentiometer, or rheostat, is a single component that consists of a coil of wire with a sliding contact, midway along it as shown. The sliding contact has the effect of separating the potentiometer into two parts as an upper part and a lower part both of which have different resistances. Their resistances are proportioned to its length of both parts. Their potential differences are proportional to its resistance of both parts. So, their potential differences are also proportional to its length of both parts. If the sliding contact is at point B, the resistance of the lower part is zero, and so the potential difference across it is also equal to zero. While the resistance of the upper part is maximum, and so the potential difference across it is equal to EMF. If the sliding contact is moved upwards, the resistance of the lower part will increase and so the potential difference across it will also increases. While the resistance of the upper part will decrease and so the potential difference across it will also decrease. If the sliding contact is at point A, the resistance of the lower part is maximum and so the potential difference across it is equal to the EMF of the power supply. While the resistance of the upper part will be zero, and so the potential difference across it will also zero. P potential dividers are used widely in volume controls and sensory circuits using LDR and thermistors. Potential dividers and thermistor. The thermistor and resistor are connected in series as shown in a diagram. The potential difference across the power source is shared between them. The current from the power supply is equal to the current through the thermistor and resistor. So, the potential difference across each component is proportional to its resistance. When the temperature increases, so the resistance of thermistor decreases. The thermistor will get a smaller share of the potential difference, while the resistor will get a greater share. When the temperature decreases, so the resistance of thermistor increases. The thermistor will get a greater share of the potential difference, while the other resistor will get a smaller share. Potential dividers and LDR. The light-depending resistor and resistor are connected in series as shown in a diagram. The potential difference across the power source is shared between them. The current from the power supply is equal to the current through the light-depending resistor and resistor. So, the potential difference across each component is proportional to its resistance. When the light intensity increases, so the resistance of LDR decreases. The LDR will get a smaller share of the potential difference, whilst the other resistor will get a greater share. When the light intensity decreases, so the resistance of LDR increases. The LDR will get a greater share of the potential difference, whilst the other resistor will get a smaller share. <laughs> Candidates are expected to have a thorough understanding of the syllabus details outlined in the accompanying figure.
Electrical hazards from main electricity. Mains electricity is potentially lethal because it can carry high voltages and currents. Even voltages as low as 50 volts can pose a serious hazard to individuals, especially if the current is high enough. Common hazards include Damaged insulation If someone touches an exposed piece of wire, they could be subjected to a lethal shock. Overheating of cables Passing too much current through too small a wire, or leaving a long length of wire tightly coiled, can lead to the wire overheating. This could cause a fire or melt the insulations, exposing live wires. Damp conditions If moisture comes into contact with live wires, the moisture could conduct electricity, either causing a short circuit within a device, which could cause a fire, or posing an electrocution risk. Excess current from overloading of plugs, extension leads, single and multiple sockets when using a main supply. If plugs or sockets become overloaded due to plugging in too many components the heat created can cause fires. Main electricity. Mains electricity is the electricity generated by power stations and transported around the country through the national grid. Main electricity is an alternating current supply. An alternating current is the current flow back and forth. In the UK, the domestic electricity supply has a frequency of 50 Hz and a voltage of about 230 volts. A frequency of 50 Hz means the direction of the current changes back and forth 50 times every second. This creates the waveform like as shown. Main circuits. Main circuits usually consist of three wires, the live wire, the neutral wire and the earth wire. The live wire provides the path along which the electrical energy from the power station travels. This wire is brown insulated and carries the alternating voltage of negative 230 volts and positive 230 volts, making the current flow backwards and forwards through the circuit. The neutral wire completes the circuit and it is kept at zero volt. This wire is blue insulated. The earth wire usually has no current in it. It is there to protect you if an appliance develops a fault. It provides a path for current to escape without passing through the user. This wire is yellow-green insulated. Ring main circuits provide a way of allowing several appliances in different parts of the same room to be connected to the mains using the minimum amount of wiring. In a figure, is shown the ring main circuit in a room. This is a socket set in wall. These wires are connected to a consumer unit. Plug and sockets. Plugs and sockets in different countries look different, but the principles rules of electrical wiring are similar. In the UK, three pin plugs are used to connect appliances to the main circuit. The three pins are for the live wire, the neutral wire, and the earth wire. This pin is connected to the neutral wire. The middle pin is connected to the earth wire. This pin is connected to the live wire and then connected to the fuse. When wiring a plug, check the following. Wires are connected to the correct terminals, using the color code on the left. The cable is held firmly by the grip. The correct fuse is fitted. The three-pin plug is connected to the appliance and then plug in the socket when it is used. In a figure, a kettle is plugged into a main socket, it is connecting to a main circuit. Then the electrical energy comes from a generator in a power station to the kettle. In a figure, you see that the earth wire to connect with the metal casing of the appliance. A fuse is placed at the live wire. A switch is placed at the live wire. Fuse is connected in the live wire for safety. Fuse is a thin piece of wire. This is a symbol of fuse. If too much current flows through the circuit, the fuse will get overheats and melts to blow and break the circuit. This prevents the user getting a shock, the cable overheating and catching fire and saving devices in electrical appliances. 
Once the fault causing the increase in current has been corrected, the blown fuse must be replaced with a new one of the same size before the appliance can be used again. Circuit breaker is used in your consumer unit, are often in the form of trip switches. If too large a current flows in a circuit a switch automatically opens, making the circuit incomplete. Once the fault in the circuit has been corrected, the switch is reset, usually by pressing a reset button. There is no need for the switch or circuit breaker to be replaced, as there is when fuses are used. Switch is connected in the live wire for safety. With the switch open and connected into the live wire the current cannot reach the appliance. The user is safe from electric shock. With the switch open and connected into the neutral wire the current can reach the faulty appliance. The user is not safe from electric shock. Earth wire. Earth wire is a safety wire that connects the metal body of an appliance to earth. This prevents the appliance from becoming live if the live wire comes loose and touches the metal body. A current immediately flows to earth and blows the fuse. This means that the appliance is then safe to touch. If the appliance has no earth wire and the live wire comes loose, a current could flow through the user, causing an electric shock. Double insulated appliances. Some appliances do not have an earth wire. This is because their outer case is made of plastic rather than metal. The plastic acts as an extra layer of insulation around the wires which prevents any current from flowing to the user even if the live wire comes loose inside the appliance. Fuse values. The plug is usually fitted with either a 3 amperes, 5 amperes or 13 amperes fuse. The value tells you the current needed to blow the fuse. It must be greater than the normal current through the appliance, but as close to it as possible so that the fuse will blow as soon as the current gets too high. If you know the power of an appliance, you can use the equation of P equals V, I, to work out whether a 3 amperes, 5 amperes or 13 amperes fuse is needed. For example, calculate the correct fuse that should be used for 2300 watts, 230 volts, kettle. Current equals power over voltage equals 2300 over 230 is equal to 10 amperes. So, the correct fuse for this kettle is 13 amperes. Calculate the correct fuse that should be used for 550 W, 230 V television. Current equals power over voltage equals 550 over 230 is equal to 2.4 amperes. So, the correct fuse for this television is 3 amperes. The TV would still work with a 13 amperes fuse. But if a fault developed, its circuits might overheat and catch fire without the fuse blowing. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would be grateful if you would subscribe, share, like and leave a positive comment. Your support will encourage me to create more content. Thank you.